Hey, what's up guys? Fabio here once again. I want to welcome you back to another part of Q&A number five. I think we're on part four. I believe we're on part four. Um, I think so. <laughs> so let's get right into it. Um, first up, I have some questions from a good friend of mine on here, Jack Craven. Um, first question is, uh, actually he only sent in one question, but that's okay. Um, are there some unused movie scripts that you know or you've heard um, that you would think would have turned out to be great movies? Um, my personal top choices would be uh, Shane Black's Shadow Company and his original play Dirty Script for Lethal Weapon 2, uh, David Chappie's Gale Force, which was going to be a Die Hard and a Hurricane type of action movie starring Stallone, Steven D'Souza's Commando 2 that they thought about making into a movie after Schwarzenegger finished Total Recall, and William Gibson's Alien 3 script that was full of big action sequences and new alien monsters and would have been uh, a bigger action film than Aliens. Um, yeah, I mean, some of the scripts on this list, uh, Shadow Company would have been cool. Uh, Shane Black, the guy who wrote Lethal Weapon, Last Boy Scout and everything, um, his first, this was his first movie that he was going to make, uh, Shadow Company, and it was going to be basically this special forces team gets killed in Vietnam, and they come back, and they think the war's still going on, but they're zombies, and like, Kurt, John Carpenter was going to direct the movie, and Kurt Russell was going to play, like, the, the hero, so that would have been awesome, I wish they would have made that movie, uh, Play Dirty, I've never read that one. I've read the original script for Lethal Weapon, and it's mostly the same. It's just the only thing they change is Riggs lives at the end. He was supposed to die, and then same with uh, Lethal Weapon 2. He was supposed to die. Excuse me, but Play Dirty, I heard, was a lot more darker, and, and it was more violent and stuff, so I'd like to read that. Yeah, Gale Force was... It was going to be like Cliffhanger 2... I think at one point it was going to be like, um, there's this hurricane going on, and Stallone, I think, was, again, supposed to come back as Gabe Walker, or was that the one where he was, like, a cop or something, and he got a kid killed, and, like, people shunned him? I think that's the one. And then there's also The Dam, which was going to be, I guess, kind of like Hard Rain. I, I don't know. It's, you know, you hear so many different versions. Um, Commando 2, you know, I was always under the impression that Commando 2 became Die Hard, but then I heard that that was never, that was just a rumor, that was never confirmed, but they were supposed to make a Commando 2, and I remember reading the script online, um, yeah, Alien 3, they should have definitely made that instead of the abomination of a movie that we got, because fuck Alien 3. Some of the other ones I remember, like The Last Boy Scout, I remember the script being a lot different, and that would have been cool. To see that version. Um, I know The Glimmer Man with Steven Seagal. Originally the, the script was a lot. It was a bigger movie. Like there was supposed to be a scene where. Uh, SWAT comes after Steven Seagal's character. And he like fights all of them off. But they cut it out. And then there was a. Uh, the ending was supposed to take place at the. The History Museum in Los Angeles, there was supposed to be like this big shootout, but they cut it because I guess Warner Brothers stopped believing in Steven Seagal after uh, On Deadly Ground uh, flopped in America. So there you go. But also like Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers, the original script. Um, I love the producer's cut. I think it's one of the best Halloween films. It's probably my favorite. I know people are going to cringe at that, but... Um, the original script would have been awesome to see, and I know, like, Donald Pleasance loved it, like, he was so enthusiastic about it, and, um, apparently one of the producers read it, and it gave him nightmares, like, that's really cool to hear, like, that script should have got made, I mean, I love the producer's cut, I think it's the best version of the movie, but it would have been cool to see, uh, the original script made, and there's so many, um, scripts out there that never got made, like, um, you know, Kevin Smith's Superman film. Kevin Smith wrote a Green Hornet movie. Um, you know, there's, uh, I 
think they started to write The Crow 2 with Brandon Lee because the idea was going to be that he would be stuck on Earth and he would be mortal and he would have to figure out how to get back. Um, so there's so many scripts out there that never got made. But the ones that you mentioned, and like, because yeah, I remember uh, the Alien 3 script, Shadow Company, um, Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers. There's so many scripts. The Last Boy Scout, so many out there. That never got made, but oh well. Uh, so thank you, Jack Craven. I know it was only one question you did mention. You didn't have uh, many to ask, but hey, one is better than none. So thank you, brother. Uh, next up, we have DJ Donnelly, good guy here on YouTube, who sent in 10 questions. Um, number one, um, since you have recently joined the Army, uh, what are some of your favorite films dealing with the Army? Good question. Um, I, you know, war films, I've always enjoyed war films. Um, some of my favorites are uh, Saving Private Ryan, We Were Soldiers with Mel Gibson, um, you know, dealing with the Army. Uh, you know, Stripes is probably my favorite with Bill Murray. I actually, my dad and I actually watched that before I left. He's like, well, since you're going in, we got to watch this movie. So, you know, we watched Stripes. Great film. Uh, that's probably my favorite that deals with the Army. What kind of training are you doing? Army training, sir! And uh, one of my good friends from boot camp, uh, we talked about Stripes all the time. And we're like, yeah, you know, it kind of feels like Stripes. And, you know, great movie. That's the fact, Jack. I love, I kind of want to watch it now, you know. Um, oh, well. But some other, I'm trying to, like, find... That's me downloading movies. Um, trying to find some other, like, Forrest Gump is another one. You know, the, the, the little part in Forrest Gump where he's in the army. That's another one we talked about. But, yeah, Saving Private Ryan, uh, We Were Soldiers is a great film. Um, I'm trying to remember, you know, like, what, what kind of... it's See, Wikipedia, it's kind of... You know, it doesn't say, like, okay, here we go, war films. You know, and then I just have to remember, like, okay, what deals with the army? Um, uh, Full Metal Jacket is definitely one of my favorites, a classic. You know, that's another movie we talked about. Um, Apocalypse Now is great. I th are they army? Yeah, they're army because... Uh, Robert Duvall's character is a Cav Scout in that movie. The Casualties of War, was that Marines or Army? It's, see, it's hard to remember which is which. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Casualties of War is a very good movie. Really enjoy that. That's Army. Great performances by Sean Penn and Michael J. Fox. Uh, good Morning Vietnam, great film. Uh, Green Berets is good with John Wayne. That's another good one. Um, the Dirty Dozen, that's good. Hamburger Hill is a great film. There's so many great, you know, films. I see. I think most of the war films are about the army. So, you know, because we are the biggest branch. You know, we do the most. Um, You know, so many great films out there. I could go on and on and on. But my favorite is definitely uh, Stripes. Stripes is a classic. Uh, number two, are you a fan of the Bee Gees? Yeah. Bee Gees, I thought, had a lot of great songs. Saturday Night Fever, you know, great soundtrack. It's a shame that... <clears throat> um, is it Robin Gibb that passed away? Is he the, is he the one, the brother that died? I think he's the one that passed away. Yes, he yeah he had cancer. Well, Maurice passed away as well. Yeah, he died in 2003, and then Robin died in 2012. So there's only one one guy left, which is unfortunate. But yeah, Saturday Night Fever was a was a great soundtrack. Um, so many great songs on there, not just from the Bee Gees, but from everyone else. But yeah, you know they had a really good. 
Really good run there. So I, I like the Bee Gees. They're cool. Uh, number two, what movie backlash or interference with the studios or the MPAA interests you the most? Um, hard Target, definitely, because it just goes to show you that the MPAA is fucking retarded and they don't know anything and they're corrupt and it's all bullshit. Because if you watch the uncut version of Hard Target, it's really not that violent and it's fake. It's a fucking movie. It's not real life. It's blood squibs and makeup and special effects. It's not real. They're not really killing people. It's so stupid. It's retarded. Uh, so Hard Target is probably the biggest one. A lot of the horror films like Phantasm 2, if you watch like the when the priest gets killed, the uncut version, it's, it's nothing like you watch it now, it doesn't matter. You know, look at some of these films that have come out in the past. 15 years and you see how high the level of violence is and you look at these 80s films and these 90s films and you're like okay wow they cut that out that's fucking nothing you know the friday the 13th film every one of those films is cut for whatever reason and it's not that violent and we're never the only ones we got to see uncut versions for was the first one and the new blood because you can find the new blood the the work print online the rest uh, no, Jason's Lives, you can find the work print. But Part 2, Part 3, Part 4, I think, had a little bit of... I think Part 4 is the least cut. Because Part 4, yeah. But the rest are all, you know, doesn't make any sense to me. It really doesn't. Halloween 5, you know, they cut all this shit out of Halloween 5. You know, the whole scene where uh, Michael Myers kills the SWAT team. You know, Don Shanks told me when I met him they he took an M16 and he shoved it in the guy's eye and turned it and cut it out. And when he smashes the cop's head into the glass, they cut that out. Because you see like the glass in his face and like blood's running down his face. Apparently the Japanese version has more violence. I'm trying to find the Japanese version. Um, you know. But yeah, you know, Hard Target's the biggest one for me because you know, they just, they fuck that movie in the ass for no reason, really no reason, and we're probably never going to see the uncut version unless uh, somebody like Shout Factory picks it up, but I don't know because they're, you know, first they were working with Universal, then they weren't, now they are again. Um, you know, there is a little glimmer of hope because they're releasing Nighthawks on Blu-ray. I mean, it's not going to have any of the deleted scenes, but at least we're getting it on Blu-ray in widescreen. And in high definition. So maybe that will lead the way for other Van Damme, you know, other action movies from Universal to get released. You know, stuff like Van Damme's movies or other, you know, stuff that. Because you know, they did The Shadow, so The Shadow has features, none of the deleted scenes, but oh well. So Hard Target, and then, you know, like Halloween 5, they cut a lot of the violence out. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street films, you know, that kind of stuff. Because if you watch them, if, you know, some of them you can, you can find, like Friday the 13th, you, some of those movies you can find the, the work prints and, and stuff. And I like collecting those for these reasons. It's not that violent. So fuck the MPAA. I, you guys remember I did a whole, like, hour rant on them. So fuck them. Uh, number three, do you happen to listen to Creepypasta and other horror related stories on YouTube. No, but I would like to, to check some of those out because I heard some of that stuff was really good. Um, number four, uh, do you think the people working in the casting department on a film should hire normal blue collar people like you or me to be in the film they're making instead of hiring the same generic everyday person who we've seen in like five movies before and looks pretty but can't act to save their life but still get jobs no matter what how bad no matter how bad their acting is on screen. Yes, I agree because Hollywood is a very cosmetic business. You have to look a certain way, you know, you have to be a pretty boy, or if you're a woman, you have to be, you know, five whatever and blonde and have big tits. Um, you know, that's just the way it works in Hollywood. But if you look at older that's why I love watching older films, because it's normal fucking people. Um, you know, it's regular average Joe people, you know, my buddy, uh, Zero Cool, uh, John did a video and he said in this video, whatever happened to blue collar people? 
and talked about movies like Tremors and, you know, older films. You know, Tremors, he used the picture for the, for the video. That's why I bring it up. But yeah, whatever happened to like regular people, you know, like Kevin Bacon or like John Candy, you know, may God rest his soul. You know, regular looking people like that. You know, again, you look at older, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was a freaking human specimen. You know, the perfect male. Okay, but Arnold Schwarzenegger still has those qualities of a regular person. He's a regular person. He's just, you know, fucking huge. You know, Stallone, you know, these guys. But, yeah, I think they should, you know... And there's still, you know, actors out there now that, you know, they... Regular looking people, they're not, you know, perfect and, and genetically engineered and all this shit. But, you know, I wish they would just go back to, you know, because again, going back to these movies, Halloween, Friday the 13th, you know, the older films, the older ones, not these remakes and stuff. But if you look, the women, they're regular looking. I mean, yeah, they're attractive. Jamie Lee Curtis, PJ Solis, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, Adrian King. Uh, LaPark Lincoln, Amy Steele, um, uh, what's her name from part six? Uh, Megan, I know her first name is Megan, I believe. No, 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 no. Her, her character name was Megan. Is it Jennifer? I don't remember the, the, the girl from part six. Her name was Megan in the movie, but I forget the actress's name. But, but yeah, the attractive women, but the regular looking, you know. So there you go. So yeah, I do miss that. Uh, number five, are there any interesting urban legends slash myths about your hometown or state that you that interests you? Uh, yeah, I live like 20 minutes from Gettysburg, you know, where the big, you know, where the battle of the Civil War was. So around that area, yes, there's a lot of uh, urban legends, a lot of ghost sightings and, and ghost spots and stuff. So that stuff is very interesting. Like there's a lot of old bridges where... You drive your car in, and, and you can hear things, and a lot of the houses in that area are haunted. Um, one that, I, that I've always liked, one urban legend, was there was this woman. Uh, she was the only civilian casualty of the Civil War. She was in her kitchen. She was baking, and a bullet came through the window and killed her. And the house is like a historical site, so if you go there, like you can, and you can hear her in the kitchen and stuff like it's really weird but where i live you know we don't celebrate halloween on halloween for before way before i lived there something happened on halloween and we don't celebrate it on halloween and nobody talks about it so that's kind of cool too um you know I, I think that's pretty cool so yeah but yeah gettysburg definitely has a lot and where i live uh you know not celebrating halloween but of course there you know there's always every town there's always that one house, and in my town there's a few houses that are definitely haunted, and it's pretty cool. So there you go. And I love that stuff. I really do. Uh, what is one, number six, what is one of your least favorite comic book battles? Um, really none that I can think of. I think a lot of them um, are good, but, you know, of course after a while it gets old, you know, you get tired of it. And it's like the same ones over and over again. So just when they repeat the same ones over and over again, it gets old. But I can't really say this one I, I dislike. So, yeah. Uh, number seven. Will there be any more rants or discussion videos on topics that you hate or want to get off your chest? Yeah, I think one day, I, again, you know, now that I, I'm in a different situation, you know, I live in the barracks, you know, I have people all around me. You know, I don't want to yell and scream and carry on and, and get noise complaints and stuff like that. But uh, maybe when I go home for two weeks and Chris, for Christmas, um, maybe I will record some some rants, some uh, some videos where I can just go off the cuff and, and yell and scream like I do a lot of the times. Which, those videos are always fun. I know people criticize, not just me, but others when we do those type of videos. But it's always fun to just let the aggression out and we're not hurting anybody we're just we're expressing our feelings in a video and it's there's nothing wrong with it it's perfectly normal um so maybe soon i will i will do those um, because i'm going home 
uh, next weekend, um, but I don't think I'm going to do any rants. I, mean, I might do a couple of videos while I'm home, but uh, we'll see. Uh, number eight, what is one of your favorite MPAA scenes that got cut from the movie that you happen to like but wish it was still in the movie? Um, again, Hard Target, you know, all those action scenes, they, they shortened for whatever reason because, again, you know, it's not that bad. And it's funny because the Blu-ray of Hard Target is the, the international version, which is a little bit longer and it's got more action in it. So that kind of stuff. And, again, just, like... Again, going back to these movies, Friday the 13th, Halloween, the special effects people will spend so much time creating these effects, and then you want to cut it out because you don't like it. You know, that's, that's stupid. So, you know, yeah, like stuff from Hard Target, stuff from these horror films where, you know, blood's gushing out of a dude's head, and you know it's fucking phony. That's what really pisses people off. You know it's phony. So there you go. Number nine, what are your thoughts on the Amazon pilot with Van Damme? I loved it. I just watched it the other day. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was great. It was awesome to see Van Damme uh, be funny. You know, when he's like doing the opening monologue and he's like, I'm Van Damme and you may remember me from Bloodsport. It's on TV all the time. Or Time Cop, which is like Looper. But a million times better. Like, I just laughed and laughed. And when he's, like, working out and he can't lift the weights and he keeps going down. Or he goes to kick the bag and he falls over and he's like, oh, shit. And then he does the split and he can't do it. And he's like, I used to do the splits, but not anymore. And, oh, man, it's just, it was hilarious. I loved it. I'm so glad it got picked up for a full season. I'm definitely looking forward to uh, the rest of the episodes. Hopefully they come out soon. Because I want to see him. I, I just, I loved the pilot. I thought it was great. The fight at the end was great. When he was doing the kicks and he was like, come on, come on. You know, and he did the split and he like punched the guy in the balls like in Bloodsport. I'm like, all right, yes. Van Damme is back. Oh, man, I just, I loved it. I thought it was, it was great. I'll, I'm probably going to watch it again. But, oh, man, it, it was, it was, it made me smile the whole time. The whole 30 minutes, I smiled, and I'm like, yes, this is this is what Van Damme needs to do because this is the old Van Damme that everybody misses. You know, this is this is what he should do. It was, it was awesome. It was awesome. Loved it. And the last question, I know you didn't like Batman vs. Superman, but uh, what would your thoughts be if they were to make a standalone Batman movie with Ben Affleck? Uh, I think they are. I think that's the idea um, to do a a movie with Ben Affleck um, as Batman. Because I know they're doing Justice League, obviously. But yeah, I mean, because I think Affleck wants to to write and direct the movie. So I mean, it would work. You know, I think it would work if he were to do his own movie. So I'm down for it. So thank you, DJ Donnelly. I know you put, I hope these questions are interesting. Yeah, you know, they were good questions. So thank you for sending them in. Um, next up, I'm going to try to finish up here because I think the battery is about to die. We'll see. Uh, I have two questions from uh, Movie Metal Rock McDonald. Um, if Expendables 3 was rated R, do you think, do you, do you still think the movie sucked? Yeah, because they did the the unrated version on Blu-ray, and it added more, like there was a little bit more violence and action, and then there was more language, but I still think it would have sucked because if it was the same approach, like let's get these new guys, Expendables 3, they should have just stayed with the, the formula of the old action guys, and it would have been a better movie, but no, I mean, if they were just to do the same approach and then just make it rated R, no, I, I think the movie still would have sucked. I don't even know if they're doing part four because I haven't heard anything. And, you know, I heard, like, Stallone's going to retire because Creed, like, you know, got him back into, you know, because he won, like, all these awards for Creed. Like, I heard he's going to retire. I don't know. You hear so many fucking rumors. But Expendables 4, if it were to come out, I would see it. If not, I'm not that upset. The first two are all I need, really. I mean, three, there was things I liked in three. But, you know, 
I, I didn't get a big dick about three, but whatever. Um, and then the second question, do you think Blood Moon is one of Gary Daniels' best movies? I actually just got it on DVD, because um, I had never seen it. I'd always wanted to see it because I like Gary Daniels, and also Rob Van Dam has a small part in the movie. But I liked it. I thought it was pretty good. Um, I really haven't seen many of Gary Daniels' movies. Like That's one guy I've always wanted to to get more into his movies because I always liked him. Because um, growing up, I remember um, Fist of the North Star, I remember watching as a kid once, and I was like, oh, this is cool. I like this guy. And then I liked, um, I really enjoyed Riot. Riot is just a very fun action film, great action film. Um, and I really liked Recoil. Recoil was a lot of fun too. Um, just kind of looking at his filmography. Yeah, I know he was like in City Hunter with Jackie Chan and he was in a couple of Don the Dragon Wilson movies before he was famous. Uh, but Deadly Target I liked. Uh, Rage, White Tiger, Hawk's Vengeance, Blood Moon, Riot, Recoil. That's really all I've seen. Fist of the North Star. Um, I saw Firepower because ult the Ultimate Warrior was in that movie, but Gary Daniels dies, so I'm like, okay, whatever. Like they should have switched the roles. Like Chad McQueen should have died and Gary Daniels should have lived, but oh well. But uh, yeah, I, I like Blood Moon. I just watched it the other night actually. Um, so yeah. Um, then we have so thank you for sending in those questions. Then we have uh, Crikey Dingo Man. That's a cool name. Who sent in five questions? Um, have you heard of or seen any of Netflix's series Stranger Things? No, I've heard a lot of good things about it. I would like to check it out at some point. Uh, number two, what's your favorite movie of the year so far? Uh, probably Deadpool. Um, really enjoyed Deadpool. Like I said, I was very impressed with it. And um, well. I don't know. I think maybe Civil... I would... Civil War. Actually, yeah, Civil War I liked a little bit more than Deadpool. Because Civil War was just a really fun movie. It was just really fun. Had a lot of good action in it. Really liked it. So yeah, I would have to say Civil War on that one. But Deadpool I really enjoyed as well. Deadpool would be like the runner-up. But um, Civil War. Just kind of looking over to see if there was another movie that I really liked. I didn't get to see a lot of movies from this year because I was at boot camp and, and, you know, I didn't have my computer for the first couple of weeks I was out here and stuff, so. I still want to see um, 13 Hours, London Has Fallen, and Hardcore Henry, but right now, as it stands, my favorite movie of this year was uh, Captain America. So there's some other films that I would like to see. That will maybe take over. I don't know. The nice guys I really want to see. So yeah, there's still some movies, but but yeah. So uh, number three, what is the worst year for movies in your opinion? Well, I think uh, like the 2010s all combined are pretty bad because there's been a lot of shitty movies that have come out in the uh, the past six years, which is hard to believe it's 2016 already. But but yeah, there's been a lot of shitty movies these past six years. So if it's a combined effort. Number four, favorite newer video game. Um, probably like Call of Duty Black Ops. Black Ops 2. Black Ops, no. Uh, what's the one with... Modern Warfare 3. Because that's the one with like the survival mode. And I really like that. I play that all the time. So yeah, Modern Warfare 3 probably. I don't play a lot of newer video games. So... And then the last question, uh, favorite hobby other than movies? Um, I don't know, probably music. I just, I love listening to music. I'm, I'm as a, a big as a music nerd as I am a movie nerd. Um, I just love listening to music, you know. Rock is my favorite. So, you know, like stuff like Van Halen, Kiss, Led Zeppelin, um, ACDC, Aerosmith, you know, Metallica, stuff like that. You know, I just love, just love rock music. 
So thank you, Crikey Dingo Man, and everyone else for sending in those questions. I'm going to end it here, folks. Uh, we're at the 30-minute mark. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.